high quality Instagram reels. I'm gonna show you how to create high quality Instagram reels from start to finish inside of Premiere Pro, and I'll be showing you the exact export settings I use for the best results. If you're brand new here, welcome. My name is Anthony, and I'm gonna be doing a mini series on short form content creation. So if you like this, make sure you stick around and subscribe for the videos that are coming up next. But I do have something for you today. If you go down into the description, there's a free download, which is a template that we're gonna be using today to edit to make sure our Instagram reels look good. So pick that up, and now we're gonna jump into editing. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is start a new project. By clicking new project, then this dialog box will come up and you'll wanna say where you're saving your project. In my case, I'm gonna save it to this folder, but if you wanted a different location, just hit other location and browse to the folder that you want. Then I'm gonna name my project. I'm gonna call it sample project and we're gonna go down to create. And this is what it looks like by default. Yours might look a little bit different, but the one thing you're gonna wanna look for is this sample project tab. Then come over here to this icon where it says new item and click on sequence. That will open up this dialog box with a ton of presets. You can just ignore all those. I have some custom ones that I've already created, but we're gonna create one together. So let's go to digital SLR under 1080p. Now you can either use the 24 frames per second option or the 30 frames per second option. Instagram Reels currently uses 30 frames a second and the maximum resolution that you can export to is 1080 by 1920. Right now, we're just gonna pick the 30 frames per second option and we're gonna go over to settings. So you can see 29.97 or 30 frames a second. Now we need to change this 1920 to 1080 and this 1080 to 1920. So we're specifically swapping, oh my gosh, so we're swapping the dimensions because again, this is a vertical video. Everything else you can leave the way it is, but just in case yours is different, 29.97 square pixels, rec 709 and all this audio stuff, you can just leave it the way it is. And I'm gonna call this new, new sequence and hit okay. What that does is it opens me up and it throws me into the timeline, except we have no footage. So I'm actually gonna go back to that project bin. Now, if you wanted to organize your footage, you could do things like create folders and all this other stuff, but we're gonna keep it really simple for today. I'm gonna drag in this forest footage and you'll notice right off it's 24 frames per second. That's okay, but watch what happens. When I drag this into my timeline, it's gonna tell me there's a mismatch, that the footage I have is 24 frames per second and the sequence is 30 frames per second. Again, we can say that's okay, keep the settings because Instagram is automatically gonna use 30 frames per second. This is a 4K footage and what I wanna do is make sure we can see more of it. Now, depending on how much you wanna see, if you wanna fill the full frame, you could say take the scale and set it to 89. Once you go below 89, like if you go to 87, you'll start to get some black bars on the bottom. If I go to 80, you can see the black bars. That might be what you want. Maybe you want to see more of your footage. Maybe we go down to 50 so that when we play it back, we can actually see this landscape shot. We have two options here. We can go full scale at 89% for 4K footage, or if you have 1080p footage and you don't wanna scale it, let's just, let's duplicate this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and I'm gonna drag this up to another layer. Now I have two copies of the same footage. So I'm actually gonna take this bottom one and say, just keep it at 100%, right? So now we filled the full frame. I'm gonna come over here to effects and say Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna drop that on top of my footage and you can see under effects, it's added the Gaussian blur and I'm actually gonna just drag that, just click and drag on it, or you can type it in manually, say 100%. Now I've got two copies of the footage, except one is a background that is filling the frame and the other is the regular footage on top. Depending on what style of video you want, maybe you have really wide footage and you wanna show it all, or in my case, I'm just gonna say, you know what, 89%, that looks good, that's going on Instagram Reels. I really do wanna fill the whole screen here, but maybe we wanna add some text. Without getting too specific, I'm just gonna come up to graphics and titles, say new layer, text, and it's, it's thrown some text on there. I'm actually gonna zoom in because it's really small and we're just gonna drag this so that the text covers my whole sequence. Now you can see it's taken the default style that I have, 
where it has this outline. But if you wanted to change that, you would just come in here to Essential Graphics. If you don't have any of these windows that I'm mentioning, just come up to Window and you could tag on and off Essential Graphics or you can turn on and off effects. That's where you find that. I'm gonna change this to, I don't know, Comic Sans? No, that would be terrible. I like Helvetica. We're already in Helvetica. Maybe I want it to be, what do I have, bold? There, there we go, that's my style. Black Condense, I'm actually gonna turn off that bold, turn off the stroke, add a shadow, and there you go. Now my text is in the center. Actually, I should probably make it say something like Magical Forest. Okay, that looks good, but now we need to add music. I'm personally a fan of adding music inside of Premiere Pro, whether that means downloading the audio from Reels using a third-party software and then putting it inside the timeline, or in my case, I actually like to use Artlist because then that way I can repost my content across multiple sites and not worry about any copyright strikes like you would get on YouTube. So I've actually got my song here that I've downloaded, again, from Artlist. If you currently don't have any music subscription, I highly recommend getting Artlist. It's a little bit cheaper than Epidemic Sound. And if you do want, I think two months off or a month free or something like that, I do have a coupon code in the description which you can use for that free trial or free month. I'm gonna grab this footage on this timeline and I'm just gonna trim it off and drag it to where it needs to be. Now it's good to go, except I need to do my final checks. And I mentioned a template. Now I'm gonna go back to my project bin and I'm gonna drag in this Instagram Reels overlay that I have. Now this is super helpful. I'm gonna drag it on my timeline here. What you can see is this red overlay. It's the interface for Instagram Reels because what you don't want is your text being covered. So like, let's say, you know, if, if I didn't have this and I just thought, oh, I'm just gonna put text at the bottom here. Well, surprise, surprise, that's gonna be blocked by all the icons now your audience won't be able to see it. We're gonna undo that, we're gonna throw that back at the top and turn this back on, but there's one more thing you need to pay attention to. Different devices have different aspect ratios, and what Instagram does is it will always scale your video to fit the most amount of screen. So if your device is really tall, it means that the sides of your video will get cut off. And if you look at this template I've got here and I zoom in, really far, you can see I put this really faint dotted red line here and it says, <laughs> On devices with taller screens, this area of the video will be cropped. Now I tested this on a Samsung S2022, whatever the most recent one is, and I noticed about 50 pixels from either side got cropped. If you're on iPhone, it will be slightly different. I'm on an older Pixel phone and I find the bottom actually gets cropped off. It's like literally five pixels at the bottom. So I would avoid putting any critical content at the very edges of your frame. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna scale down my text a little bit just to make sure it's in that safety zone and recenter it. Now my footage and my reel is good to go. So this is a video I made for the GoPro Max lens mod that's actually coming out tomorrow. So you can probably find that by the time this video comes out. It's fully edited. I've got all of my video footage in there. I've got my audio, I've got my sound effects. So what I wanna do is I wanna come up to this export tab. You can also get there really quick by hitting Control M on the keyboard that will bring this up. And now there's a few things you wanna pay attention to. One is the file name. In this case, it's already named it for me. I name all my files, the date, a description, and then if it's for Instagram Reels, I'll just say Reels. Now, depending on how you have this set up, you may have to scroll and say more presets, but the one you're gonna to wanna to look for to start is this Match Source Adaptive High Bitrate. And that will literally get you 90% of the way there. In fact, if you are short on time, I would say Export and you're good to go, except for two settings. The first you're gonna to wanna to do is come down to Video. Make sure you hit Match Source. If this is grayed out, Match source has already been hit. I'll just hit it one more time. Let's hit more. I'm actually gonna say variable bitrate one pass. Two pass usually cuts about 10% of the video size, but it takes like twice as long to render. So I always recommend changing this to variable one pass unless you have a massive video file and you need to cut the size down. And then I tend to use a target bitrate that's between 10 and 15. Now you could raise this all the way up to 50. And what you'll notice is that the estimated file size goes from like 50 megabytes to 180. So it's like tripled, more than tripled in size. If you go all the way down to one, 
you'll notice it's really small. So I like to keep that somewhere in the middle and the happy spot or the sweet spot that I found has been 15 megabits per second. One thing you don't need to worry about is this maximum depth and maximum render quality. If you're on hardware encoding, these settings will automatically be included in your export. So you can just leave those alone. You don't have to sweat about it. One more thing you wanna do is come down to audio. AAC is fine, 48 kilohertz is fine, but one thing you wanna check is this stereo setting. If you're uploading with an Android device, I have found that sometimes it takes the stereo channels and combines them into a mono channel. And what happens is that boosts the level and then you get audio clipping or gain or distortion and it ruins the audio of your reel. So I found the way to fix that is to go from stereo to mono and then that way it avoids that issue. Now that we're happy with this, this is how you can save it as a preset. You actually come up to here, go custom, save preset. Now we can name it Instagram Reels Export Settings or whatever name that will make it easy for you to find in the future. Now we'll hit export. The final thing you'll need to do is get your video from your computer to your device. And the way I do that is through Google Drive. If you have an Apple, you can also use AirDrop or you can just connect your phone old school way to your computer with a, a USB. That's how I take my content from start to finish for Instagram Reels. For TikTok, it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna be covering that in the next video where I talk about some of the techniques I use to create a hook, to edit my text, to edit my footage and my graphics and all that sort of fun stuff. That will be available here. But if it's just my hand, then that, that video is not available yet, but it will be in the future. Go ahead, leave a comment. Let me know which platform do you like better? Do you use Instagram Reels or do you use TikTok? I wanna know. You could drag this all the way up to 50, which is the, now you could drag this all the way up to 50. It's not going to 50. 